Hello everyone. One of the very important topic in endocrinology is called as pheochromocytoma. And uh, pheochromocytoma is very important again. Uh, this condition comes uh, in the differential diagnosis of many thyroid disorders as well. Like when you will know about this condition more than you would know what I'm saying. So let's start and uh, So first of all, uh, what is pheochromocytoma or definition is, uh, definition of pheochromocytoma is that uh, it's not so common, so uh, it's a catecholamines, catecholamines, like which are the flight and fight hormones, epinephrine and norepinephrine. So this is a tumor which secrete uh, catecholamines. Okay, so it's a catecholamine secreting tumor, and it is derived from uh, chromaffin cells of sympathetic system or nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system now like uh, <clears throat> uh, most commonly you know um, it is present in adrenal medulla which is the site where catecholamines are formed so most commonly it's a single tumor in uh, what you can say in the adrenal medulla and uh, Sometimes, you know, it could be like in other places as well. So, of course, like when it is going to release more and more catecholamine, so of course, like it is going to give high blood pressure or hypertension in patients, okay? So, most of the cases are like sporadic. 80% of the time, it is sporadic, which means like out of nowhere it comes. Few of the cases, it can be familial as well. In friends and families and in that case you know if you remember like in physiology in pathology we, we uh, study about multiple endocrine neoplasias there is type uh, multiple endocrine neoplasias can be type 1 type 2 type 2 have type 2a and pipe type 2b okay so whenever like it is familial they it comes in combination or in association with multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2 and type 2b okay so uh, <clears throat> this thing is very important and then of course like there are certain conditions as well like neurofibromatosis or uh, uh, von hippel and lindau syndrome like things like this in which uh, it can it can be present and uh, uh, like the exact mechanism of how it keep on producing so much catechola means is not known so that's why uh, I'm not going to go in more detail of that. Um, uh, if we will talk about the clinical features, so guys, the clinical features are so simple and so easy. If you know the function of sympathetic uh, nervous system or uh, if you know the function of uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, so the thing will become easy for you. Okay, uh, simply in clinical features, oh, uh, what you have to remember is like how uh, what is the action of uh, epinephrine as well as norepinephrine and you would quickly tell the clinical features so easily okay uh, so now uh, the the hormones can be like this that you know uh, it it is released from the tumor in a pulsatile fashion or it could be uh, present in the body in sustained fashion so uh, simply uh, many patients they they have uh, you can say hypertension okay uh, which come in bouts or there is episodes of hyper hypertension or so you can say uh, paroxysmal okay there is like attacks of hypertension in many of the patient okay uh, many got sustained hypertension as well okay because it is a function of epinephrine and norepinephrine like it uh, increases the blood pressure so <clears throat> 
it do gives headache whenever the uh, hormones are released uh, of course it's epinephrine so palpitations will be there okay palpitations or tachycardia and they are they become sweaty so sweating or in medicine we call it as diaphoresis okay so it is like they feel sweaty all the time or you can say palpitations over tachycardia uh, simply like of course like palpitations the patient will complain when you are going to examine you will find tachycardia these three things are also called as the trust classic triad as well this one this one and this one these three uh, are called as the classic triad but like this is not present in all the patients so that's why i'm not mentioning over here the triad so see whenever the epinephrine is going to increase in, in anyone's body uh, like think about like you had like you are going somewhere or you have like uh, some fight with someone and you become angry and suddenly like you, you plan to hit him so see you you become shaky so tremors because why you become shaky because this is and that's what happened by the way when someone goes into hypoglycemia they become sweaty they have palpitations they become shaky why because you know these are the uh, features of increased uh, epinephrine as well as norepinephrine in the body okay so you will found these patients in too much anxiety same thing which I was talking about when someone go into hypoglycemia. Many of them they have chest or abdominal pain as well. And uh, many, okay, these features are not present in all the patient. Nausea and vomiting can be there. Okay. Uh, visual blurring can be there. Okay. So, and polydipsia and polyuria, of course. So, uh, this thing is in, uh, are the clinical features not all are present in everyone but there are some features for example uh, many of these patients when they have sustained hypertension for a long period of time so chronically they can develop because like one of the side effect of uh, or like hypertension it, it damages the eyes okay retina so it can lead to papillary edema okay it will lead to hyperglycemia okay it can lead to dilated Card dilated cardio myopathy as well so uh, these are all the features of pheochromocytoma and uh, these symptoms of course like uh, so many times it's not like this that the patients have symptoms all the time but sometimes for example uh, the people who have this tumor what happens is like whenever they are in some stressful condition uh, whenever they exert themselves or whenever they, they eat certain foods like for example cheese why I'm saying cheese because or chocolates for example because these food have something called as tyramine in them and tyramine is the one you know which is needed to make these hormones in the body so uh, these are you can say the exaggerating or triggered factors which can which can give the attacks of more and more and more symptoms okay so they're simply you can say symptoms may be triggered by all these things which i already talked about which could be stress which could be like consuming some sort of food which could be exertion okay so all all these things can lead to uh this kind of symptoms so um how we investigate these patients investigations investigations are simply uh, whenever there is in the body there is no epinephrine and or epinephrine you know they are breakdown and once they are breakdown you know the breakdown metabolites of those these things started appearing in the urine okay so what we check is urine uh, catecholamines catecholamines okay so what we found in, in, in these patients urine like the break the breakdown products of this catecholamines Epinephrine and norepinephrine are called as metanephrines. Okay, so we found like the, the, the level of this thing is higher in the urine. Okay, and uh, you can also measure by the way, it's not like this that you will be always what you can say measure in the urine, but we can also measure plasma metanephrines as well. Okay. Uh, second thing, of course, this is to make the diagnosis and second thing is to see the tumor, where is the tumor? For that, you can do a CT scan simply, okay? 
and uh, the, the first CT scan we always go for is to we go, go for abdominal CT scan to check for the most common place where the tumor can be but for example if if you fail to found this tumor uh, at that place so then we go for a whole body CT scan go whole body CT in that case we use a special type of uh, uh, you can say a dye uh, that is called as MIBG scanning. What is MIBG? It's meta iodo benzo guanine scan. Okay, so uh, we can we can we can go for this thing. I, I can write over here. It is meta iodo um, benzo guanine scan. Okay, like this scan is MBIG scanning is good scanning to to cast tumors. Uh, you can also do MRI of course simply to locate the tumor and uh, once the tumor is found of course the treatment is simply uh, <coughs> surgical removal. Of course whenever there is uh, uh, what you can say <clears throat> a tumor which is secreting these hormones so of course the uh, ultimate treatment you can say uh, should be surgical uh, removal of the tumor the, the best thing you can do okay but uh, one problem is there is there because you know it's very uh, like we cannot perform surgery or any unstable patient so we must uh, make them first of all stable so that you know they can undergo surgery so these patients need a lot of pre-op preparation a very challenging thing is to control their BP control their uh, blood pressure before surgery is very important in these patients so what what they do the doctors do is uh, they give them alpha blockers alpha blocker drugs okay alpha blockers they give them what are the alpha blockers you can remember dozaxo zosen okay can be given to them CCBs can also be given them. Calcium channel blockers can also be given them. Okay. So, also we can give them IV ventolamine. Okay. So, these are the drugs like uh, we can give them to prepare uh, for surgery. To control their heart rate, you can give them beta blockers. I think like all of you remember like the name of beta blockers. There are many beta blockers which we can give them. One, some more drugs are also there. Uh, for example, metyrosine. Metyrosine. What is metyrosine? Basically, it inhibit inhibit uh, catecholamine synthesis. So where we can give them these drugs, metyrosine, which is a catecholamine uh, <clears throat> synthesis inhibitor. Okay. Uh, so all these drugs can be given. Uh, like ben fen uh, uh, phenoxybenzamine can also be given to the these patients as well. So this is the treatment and the post op uh, post operative testings needed needs like to just to check like if the tumor is resected or not so what they do like we rescreen their uh, the patient urine for uh, the metanephrines okay just to make sure like the, the tumor is gone okay so like this is like a very easy condition. See that there is high blood pressure. So we just give all these drugs to control the blood pressure, the heart rate, or to inhibit like the formation of catecholamines rest. Like the condition is quite easy to understand. Okay. So um, uh, that's all about uh, pheochromocytoma. Okay. And uh, now a few more topics guys uh, which I'm going to wind up in a quick fashion you can say 
quickly. Uh, many of the topics, you know, which maybe you will found in, in endocrinology books and I'm, I will not cover is uh, basically are the topics which uh, you are going to study with different things. For example, osteoporosis, you are going to study that thing in gynecology. Uh, gynecomastia, for example, you are going to study that thing in uh, surgery, for example. Okay. So, uh, many of the topics, you know, uh, like which I'm not covering, of course, uh, why? Because uh, they will be covered in some other uh, places. Okay, that's the reason I'm not touching those topics. Like, it's not. I'm not saying uh, you will find in your books, but uh, you can you can find in the in in, in your books. Uh, yes, one of a very important topic which we can cover to, uh, with this one is called as um, Cushing syndrome. Okay, and Cushing syndrome is very 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 important. By the way, um, uh, like it is so common that uh, <clears throat> uh, you are going to like see this Cushing syndrome almost in every book and in medicine uh, when you will start when you will you will study different condition like asthma uh, you know you will found like this is as a side effect of different uh, different conditions like especially when the patient is taking steroids okay so Cushing syndrome in simple words they have a typical look like I found this disease easy to understand because uh, they have Keshe Cushing syndrome people they have a typical look and they are easy to catch what is Cushing syndrome it is simply um, you can say chronic uh, glucocorticoids uh, excess in the body okay uh, glucocorticoids are formed in medulla I'm sorry sorry not medulla adrenal gland okay so now this chronic glucocorticoid excess can, can be like either this glucocorticoids in excess are formed inside the body or either this glucocorticoids you someone is taking out from in the form of tablets or injections for example like uh, if you know like the asthma patients uh, we can put them on steroids many rheumatological conditions we put them on steroids many many conditions in the body uh, we put them on steroids uh, sometimes the quacks you know and especially in my country uh, they put the patients on steroids uh, and the patients they feel good they, they gain weight and that uh, uh, like all their inflammatory process is suppressed by steroids so they become happy like maybe they are getting better but in reality you know glucocorticoids have a lot of side effects i will talk in a while so chronic glucocorticoid excess can be endogenous uh, within the body or it can be could be exogenous like someone is taking the form of uh, drugs or tablets okay uh, so uh, now uh, this one uh, if you remember like you know that uh, access uh, how these hormones are formed uh, you know like there is adrenocorticotropic releasing hormone uh, which is released uh, and which uh, act on the adrenal glands and in response to that the adrenal gland they started forming this glucocorticoids so uh, most of the time uh, this Cushing syndrome uh, is occurs due, due to there is excess release of uh, ACTH okay so we also call it as adrenocorticotropic hormone dependent uh, type okay which is like the most common one 85 percent of the time it is this thing so <clears throat> of course like when the ACTH is there in the body and it is released too much so it is going to act on the adrenal gland and the adrenal gland is hyper functioning keep on producing uh, the hormones so what we found in these patients is bilateral uh, adrenal uh, hyperplasia like you found that the adrenal glands are quite big okay um, now uh, this ACTH can be coming from anywhere for example it could be a uh, pituitary adenoma which is releasing more and more and more of ACTH okay and when this ACTH is coming from pituitary uh, pituitary adenoma we call this condition as Cushing disease keep this thing in mind guys if someone is asking you Cushing syndrome that doesn't mean that this is ACTH coming from the pituitary tumor Cushing syndrome remember whenever there is syndrome it means like certain 
symptoms and signs are collected together and they are forming some condition and we name it as syndrome. Whenever the ACTH is released from the pituitary adenoma, we call just that condition as Cushing disease. They have, will have the same sign and symptoms as the patient of Cushing syndrome, okay? But um, of course, this condition, when the ACTH is coming from pituitary adenoma, we call it as Cushing disease. For example, someone who is a patient, some chronic disease patient who is taking steroids for a long period of time, and because of taking that steroids, if we develop the sign and symptom of Cushing syndrome, that doesn't mean Cushing disease, that is Cushing syndrome. I hope you understand this point, okay? Uh, Sometimes this ACTH can be released from some ectopic tumor, okay? Atomic tumor secreting ACTH. For example, very nice example of this thing is what? Small cell lung carcinoma. Uh, this one uh, is a paraneoplastic type of syndrome. Uh, many people who have small cell lung carcinoma, they keep on releasing ACTH, okay, from that tumor. And that uh, ACTH will keep on uh, acting on adrenal hyperplasia, uh, adrenal gland, and it will result into hyperplasia. It could be uh, small cell lung carcinoma, bronchial carcinoma. Okay, it could be a carcinoid tumor, carcinoid tumor as well. Okay, as well as many people who have. Um, thyroid tumors, okay, especially medullary thyroid tumors. Okay, the second type is uh, ACTH independent. Now, what is this ACTH deep independent? Of course, like this, these, the, the, this one is the people around 15%, okay, or the less common type, you can say. What is this? Okay, I understand what is this. Okay. Now, see, these are the people which I was talking about in the start. Anyone who is using uh, glucocorticoids for long, long term. For long time. Um, for example, someone have a adrenal tumor or because you know this one is this is formed in the cortex of adrenal gland so adrenocortical tumor will be more appropriate okay it could be adenoma it could be carcinoma uh, someone who have a nodule in adrenal gland which is producing this Glucocorticoid. Of course, like when you will check the ACTH level in these cases, the ACTH level will be higher. But when you will check the ACTH level in these cases, the ACTH will be lower. Okay. So, talking about the sign and symptom, guys. Um, I will show you the clinical features. Cushing syndrome. You can see over here, they are showing a patient who have hyperglycemia, he has seen as irritability, he has fluid retention, thin extremities, GIT distress increase, they said, female will be having amenorrhea, hirsutism, thin skin, purple stria, bruises and petechias, osteoporosis, fat deposit on face and back of the shoulder, Males will develop gynecomastia, increase susceptibility to infection, moon face and personality changes. See, this is what happens when someone is taking steroids for a long period of time. The symptoms starts from weakness, insomnia, mood disorders, impaired cognition, easy bruising. Okay, that's why you will find bruising on them. In females, they will be having either decreased menses, which is called as oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea. They have like 
increased growth of hairs on their body, like which is called as hirsutism. Many people they develop acne, especially when it is ACTH dependent, the first type. We found they have a typical look. They have round moon face. They have on the back buffalo hump. You will find a lot of fats over here around the subclavicular region. You will find a lot of fats around their abdomen. You will find their face is quite reddish. You will find a lot of strias on their tummy. You will find that they have a lot of muscle wasting. That's why they have thin extremities. They will find their skin is very thin. Many people, they develop condition called as acanthosis migraines. They will be having hypertension, hyperglycemia, uh, many, many things like this, okay? Uh, wait, I will show you a few things. Okay, uh, this is again the same thing uh, you can say, which is See, this is how they look like. You can see moon fasces, facial plethora, striation on the tummy. You'll find this thing. These are the purple strias. See a lot of fats in the belly. This is a very nice photograph showing you. See, she looks like this before and after. See her face becomes so thick. See, she have a buffalo hump. See her face. as well as you can see over this thing. So, uh, this will be the presentation of the patients who have Cushing syndrome, guys. Now, what you can say, uh, what we are going to cover now is the diagnosis. Diagnosis of Cushing. So I told you all the features, you know, which, which they have. Uh, of course, I did not write them out, but like most of the features, like I say, uh, very easy to remember, guys. If you remember the features of Cushing syndromes, you 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 remember the side effects of steroids. That's it. That's it. So how we can diagnose that? So of course we'll take a history. In history, what are the important things you will ask? You will ask like either you are using any medications, if yes, which one, uh, and what happened either you gain some weight do you have any fractures any skin infections blood pressure all the stuff okay like all the things which i talk about like in causes you can ask them so the first thing is what we check 24 hours uh urine free cortisol okay um just to check like if they have increased cortisol in 24 hours or not okay so this is the first thing. Someone who have elevated cortisol, it means like there is more glucocorticoids. Then we do a dexamethasone uh, suppression test. Uh, what it means, like, you know, like anyone who will give what you can say, the dexamethasone to them, uh, what, what should be the response to the body is simply, uh, it should suppress the production as well as the acetate level in the body, okay? And, and nowadays, by the way, you know, they, 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 they do one more test called as late night. Uh, they check the level of cortisol in the saliva. Late night saliva levels of cortisol. Uh, cortisol uh, are also checked nowadays. Okay. This thing also checked nowadays. So, uh, this thing is important. 
uh, like most of these tests, you know, when they, when they come back and they, they found like these tests are, are, are not like a point towards the Cushing syndrome, uh, like then of course we can, uh, what you can say, perform some other test. Of course, like um, I'm not going to in more detail of that because, you know, um, <clears throat> like they're the beyond the scope of this lecture. And uh, what is the treatment simply? Guys, if there is an adenoma in the in the anywhere in the body for example uh, in the adrenal glands so surgery of course surgery we will do adrenalectomy okay uh, but when you will remove for example someone have bilateral adenoma so we will remove both the adrenal glands so of course then these patients don't have glucocorticoids so in that case you have to uh, replace the uh, glucocorticoids okay uh, like you have to give supplements okay tablets of that if of course they have carcinoma so you, you will go for uh, first of all surgery then chemotherapy okay chemotherapy you will give, give medical therapy you know which is used uh, you can say to treat uh, uh, these kind of things is called as you know we can give drugs called as ketoconazole uh, like uh, you, you, you maybe a question will come into your mind like it's a uh, drug which is antifungal but open the pharmacology books, read up about this drug and read the usages, then you would come to know. And basically, this one can reduce the cortisol levels. Uh, for example, if someone have ACTH dependent or Cushing disease, uh, I would write Cushing disease. So what is the what is the Cushing disease? The adenoma is where in the pituitary gland. So we go do transphenoidal. Okay, this is the name of the approach by which we can reach the pituitary gland. So what they do is... Uh, they do triest uh, transphenoidal resection of that tumor okay and of course after that replace the glucocorticoids uh, okay in these patients as well uh, rest is of course like whatever is the underlying cause treat that for example small cell and carcinoma resect that okay if you cannot resect anything like this give ketoconazole one more drugs metotain can also give ketoconazole or metotain the uh, metotain metotain is also a drug which is which decreases the level of cortisol in the body okay so the, like this is a, a very important topic uh, <clears throat> very important and uh, from endocrinology point of view so guys if you have any question you can ask me anytime okay thank you so much